Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of Sika Mentor podcast series where we discuss various topics regarding product management. I'm Dhruv Gupta, your host for today's session. Also, today with us, we have Ravi, uh, who's been working as a lead product manager at Exotel and has been working on enhancing the end user experience for the B2B customers for more than 10 years. Uh, welcome to today's podcast, Ravi. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, like Vistro. So let's start with introductions. Why don't you introduce yourself, Ravi? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I started uh, with I've gone through product management as a uh, as an unconventional route. I graduated from IIT Gauti, and uh, the first job that I got was into uh, as a assistant product manager for a telecom customer, and then uh, that went to B two B kind of a role. So I worked there for a few uh, I mean a few years and then moved to solution consulting because I wanted to get my fee and study and then I have been doing this shuffling between tech consulting and product management I had worked with multiple uh, customer experience companies uh, CRM companies and uh, uh, and and worked in a, in a company called Customer Experience Lab, which tries to you know improve the overall CX metrics that the organization measures and how to improve that. And currently working at uh, uh, Exotel, which also is sort of a customer experience company uh, as a lead product manager. So the next one is what motivated you to transition from tech consulting to B2B product management? Yeah, so um, uh, so uh, understanding a feature, uh, a product feature ca that uh, can have a significant impact in terms of consulting as well. For example, over the periods of you doing consulting, you understand that lack of a particular functionality can uh, uh, can uh, what do you say, uh, uh, block you from a lot of uh, uh, use cases that can, that could have been solved. Having that kind of a, uh, a pain and understanding the domain and everything, you you get in a sense of how should how, what the product should ha should have ideally been uh, from a lot of use cases that you've been hearing. So uh, th to make myself unhandicapped and making sure that nobody else faces such such kind of constraints, I wanted to ensure that this side of uh, feedback is also got in, in, into the product. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's an exciting journey, you know, when, when I hear that you were there in consulting and then obviously in consulting, you solve customer's problem, which is uh, you, you get a lot of use cases and then you try to build your solution out of it, right? But, but it's not for a particular product, right? It's in general in the industry, what's going on, and then you try to put a business case out of it. But it's always exciting, you know, to understand that that someone from, you know, consulting background is going into product and then looking at a product perspective and then trying to solve those problems, um, uh, you know, bridging it and, and, and breaking it into smaller ones and then doing it. So it's, it's, it's always fascinating to understand your story. But... Um, on that, like, what were the biggest challenges you faced uh, during that transition when you were doing or going from consulting to product? Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, the initial the initial assignment that as soon as I moved to product management was completely a uh, a technical one. They were doing uh, a uh, binary migration and uh, and uh, unification of their code and everything. So, obviously, there is not much uh, of a value add that I could immediately provide to the projects that were the, the product that was uh, going on because that was something that they picked up for the next three months that's what they're going to do now uh, uh, where so I saw where my skills can be helpful so I started using my project project handling skill support I started I started uh, handling the communication I started handling the negotiation uh, and I, I feel that uh, PMs are responsible for the success not just shipping the features uh, to the product overall so uh, so from that standpoint it helped uh, me get into other areas of the product including support communication understanding my customers and all of that uh, so that although the core pro feature building part was not the primary goal at that point of time but it took some time uh, i used to think that technique you knowing having the technical know-how is somehow superior to having a domain knowledge or any of any of these things but ultimately slowly i realized that uh, pms all that 
need to do is ha- need to have a story to tell and not knowing the exact technical know how somehow frees you from the constraints to think beyond and there are many folks who excel in the uh, in the skills of technical know how within your team so you just need to complement their other skills and uh, i have also tried to optimize the uh, effort, dev effort from my end that's it yeah yeah no it's 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 a it's a you know great combination in my understanding that you have a technical background as well whereas you can also think from users point of view um, and 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 marry that right and then again it's it's a great skill to have to understand developer problems as well and then maybe you know wherever you can give your inputs in terms of uh, technical know how and, and and solutioning wise as well which is more the domain of development uh, or solution architects right i mean yeah i mean from uh, from functional point of view yes uh, the product uh, uh, managers will have a greater say as well that this functionality should behave this way this is what we are trying to achieve but but it's it's great to know that that you you coming from development background always had that impact and a positive approach towards it yeah so i was saying that uh, so uh... me coming from a technical consult technical consulting did not uh, need to get into the uh, hands of a uh, or shoes of a developer right so but initially i felt that that was something that was uh, required as a as, as an immediate step but later I realized that that's not the case because mm-hmm. developers are already good at what they're doing you just need to complement them for with with your understanding of whatever you saw in the domain you you need to be able to tell the stories make them empathize with the use cases that you are bringing on to the table so they understand the domain very well and the building uh for the right problem in the right manner yeah yeah completely and so on, on that one you know how has your experience in tech consulting helped you you know shape your approach for product management etc is, is there a specifics to it which would be great to know yeah so i believe that uh, 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 tech consulting and product management share a lot of commonalities other than the actual uh, developmental know how but uh, the problem solving framework that the tech consulting uh, have uh, in a structured manner of solving various complex problems and ability to breaking down those problems finding the root causes and and also portray those uh, into business metrics a huge skill that uh, uh, that typically the technology consultants would have and stakeholder management uh, this is this is like a really biggest asset that uh, tech consulting would have over somebody a developer turned uh, product manager would have so i have seen so many P- pm peers who struggled at uh, tech, uh, st- uh, stakeholder management primarily because whenever they were visiting customers or uh, get trying to get the feedback there's a lot of impatience but being in the tech consulting world you know how the businesses operate and you need to you, the more value to you give to the customer the you you get uh, double or triple in return and one of the major skill that uh, both share in commonality would be the data driven decision making because you need to convince others uh, with, with based on uh, data and uh strategic thinking beyond all of this one thing that uh, that aligns both product management and tech consulting is ability to empathize with the problem and trying to solve problems yeah okay i completely agree with you and as you mentioned already the data part of it my next question is on that itself itself you know what role uh, do data and analytics play in both consulting and product management is it is it quite similar in terms of your analysis wise or or is it quite different in terms of how you tackle the problems it, it, yeah the metrics are different but yeah. uh, the the outcomes are similar for example you, the way you do data analytics would be to identify the opportunities uh, identify right set of challenges or develop some evidence based recommendations uh, so that uh, whatever you're proposing has the backing and and also me- so for in my product standpoint you want to measure the impact of these interventions right uh, whatever yeah. changes you you've done so you wanted to measure how they are actually uh, f- finally getting delivered and measuring the product success optimizing features and and and, and ultimately understanding the customer uh, needs whether they are, they are getting reciprocated or not i think a lot of similarity is there but it's just that in technical consulting you would get an immediate feedback from the client 
while uh, in, in in this case in the in case of product management it's always vague because you had to choose uh, one over another so yeah. that 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 guilt will will still be there uh, with the, with the product management but uh, with uh, with tech consulting that uh, that part is passed on to the customer no no definitely and i think it's yes this there is this delayed gratification in that aspect right that you release to the customer i mean yes you can take the feedback from your user group or focus groups or interviews etc just to you know iterate again and again but then again i mean it's not foolproof uh, it, it's, it's not just that right so right, you yeah. had you you had sacrificed some other uh, functionality or feature to do this yeah and later you somehow some at some point of time you realize what if i had done that instead yeah so that will always be there but that's an iterative exercise you 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 learn with experience uh, and uh, you get better and there are no right choices anywhere yeah 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 completely yes you can't be 100% sure every time right that this is going to be the best solution right i mean you you, you took a choice and then you try to make it right so cool um so the next one is on um is on the customer experience part right why do you believe that uh, customer experience is a core component of a successful product management? More of a, more of a, you know, uh, functional or a, 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 you know, generic question. But I mean, it it differs from industry to industry for a particular role to role, right? So, I think that mindset has gone away uh, right now, Dhruv. So, so yeah. the way I see it is, uh, irrespective of the industry. Uh, yeah. uh, for example, gone are those days where you 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 actually build a product. Let let's say a prestige cooker. You, uh, your metric is number of sales and company successful. Now, it is if you if you don't take your customer experience as an overall, it it comes to haunt you with the reviews, loyalty, and everything. So your brand image and the voice of customers being echoed in multiple channels, all of this all of that will begin to haunt you as a brand. So, uh, so the gone are those days where you think of sales and service as an independent uh, aspects. So it irrespective of the irrespective of the domain, you still need to value uh, the customer experience, but the way you implement it probably would be different. But having said that, customer experience is the second most important thing after your product. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Yes. Okay, please yeah. No, sorry, please. Uh, uh, no, I was just mentioning um, that uh, like like your, your industry-wise, I mean, customer experience is important for all products. I mean, irrespective of which product, whichever product it is, but uh, I mean, every every industry has their own metrics, right? I mean, difference to uh, like if you are in telecom or, we, or if you are in any other uh, industry like retail, etc. They have their own metrics to measure it. So, so I was mentioning from that point of view, but but then again, you know, I completely agree with you on that. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah, so when we talk about product managers, right, a lot of focus is put into uh, user experience UI. But the moment you talk, start talking in terms of customer experience, right, it it gets you and gives you the real uh, value that you're actually delivering to the customer because you may build the wonderful, most wonderful UI, but your delivery sucks or your support sucks. And then you are bound to fail. So uh, so I had, had had various products that I've used, which had a very bad and pathetic UI UX, but had an amazing delivery. And I had no, I had because uh, because I don't need to ever reach to the brand again because my my, my product is getting delivered on time. I, I I have no I'm facing no issues. I have built loyalty of that brand, and slowly they started to improve upon uh, the other metrics. So when I say customer experience, it's an amalgamation of both, uh, the entire UX, the customer support, the 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 the, uh, the communications that that you do with the customer, including promotions, loyalty, and everything uh, included to the delivery and he has experienced that product right i mean everything in between comes i mean yes as product managers we might not be owning everything but but i agree to you that it's it's the entire process of the entire journey uh, from users point of view which which counts as a, a you know customer experience etc great um so uh, the next one is also quite an important one that how you know do you ensure customer feedback is integrated into your product development process or or essentially you know the iterative process of 
taking feedback and then uh, improving your product again and again yeah so the way uh, uh, i see it is that uh, if it is if customer experience is not getting incorporated into the product then it is organizational changes that are required not mm. just a product management or a product manager as a function or a, or a person so unless you have that ecosystem in place you will not have uh, because unless that is the metric that is that is getting counted you would not be able to bring out the value of incorporating that into the product it, it, itself because ultimately everybody needs to be aligned to this particular process so as a product manager it's important for you to have this goal convinced collect your own individual research and individual reviews and everything do a complete study and understand how they are doing better because they are incorporating all of this information and how all of this functional in total come alongside with the uh, ensuring customer feedback is integrated into the product because it's, customer feedback can be about the product can be about support can be about a lot of things but as a product manager i believe that it's your responsibility to ensure that uh, that all of these are getting incorporated at the organizational level and you do your piece with with, with respect to the product so you there are various tools that are available you can track nps you can track uh, you can do surveys and metrics can be many but having said that having that mindset and willingness to accept it and continuously track because uh, you may think we may think that a if uh, if a, a, a minor feedback is not very important but just listen to it and you the moment you listen to it the, it it keep coming back from a lot of customers and you start empathizing with that use case and you start building that uh, building that uh, uh, problem because this is some this is something that you not probably get from complete analysis market would not be saying that but your customers are saying it so you may it it can ultimately be a differentiator feature for your product any use case where you know improving customer experience has significantly impacted your your product success in terms of um you know whatever releases you have done or or any product release uh yeah so uh, like i was saying right uh, we uh, i was tracking the uh, uh, i mean uh, as soon as i joined the organization one of the uh, i was tracking the uh, customer satisfaction score and there was a field where that customers left uh, if, would you want to give any particular advice to the uh, or suggestion to the product that field actually was completely left out and ignored i have done we what what we have done is we have done i have done some data analytics around that i, I, I try to understand emerging trends and all of that and we are take your advice you know what would you give to all the aspiring product managers um, on maintaining a customer centric focus right because that's the important thing that when you work on a product right it's it's important that you think from customer's point of view and from user's point of view and then try to uh launch any feature or launch any update to your product right so what advice would you give to the aspiring product managers yeah one advice the main advice would be ensure that uh, the organization is convinced enough to focus on on having customer experience as a as a goal and second is always be a to look out for feedback it can be any source that that is there at just listen to it and then uh, and then you that's going to be a significant difference in terms of your uh, uh, your perception of how the uh, how a particular feature needs to be prioritized uh, to the, to the point that what makes a successful product and everything will uh, get into perspective so that uh, that is main advice that i say i mean it may look simple but it it yields a lot of results having just a, at a corner of your mind be prepared to look out for feedback that's it because you will always be busy with a lot of things uh, but op- being open to listening directly from a horse's mouth has a huge advantage definitely definitely and and be conscious of all the channels where your customers yeah. are right within your uh, marketing or, or or sales channels etc right so yeah. be con- be conscious of that and then uh take feedback right you either either through social media as well right and and all the channels wherever your customers are giving you inputs regarding your uh, product and plus as as ravi also mentioned that you have uh, various other tools as well which gives you that data i mean there is you know qualitative data but then there is quantitative data as well which gives you a lot of understanding of the user behavior so 
Definitely. Now, the, the last question which I have for you, Ravi, is that, uh, you know, what advice would you give to aspiring product managers? Uh, there are a lot of people who are trying to move from consulting to product management, uh, uh, you know, so for them, you know, what advice would you give and they can make this transition easy? Uh, okay. So I would say um, gain a basic understanding of um, software skills. Uh, I mean, pick any language, uh, try to build a minor, minor app uh, from start to finish and, and then uh, try to understand uh, a typical software pro software development cycle uh, from uh, from uh, you know starting to finish to uh, until until the unit testing integration testing try to understand these terminologies and uh, uh, understand how this life uh, entire cycle actually uh, goes in a typical uh, product company that is something that will build your confidence to take the next step and definitely build upon the one of the huge assets that you that the consulting guys will have is a domain understanding try to build on that and think from a product point of view and then just take a leap you are more prepared than you think you are but ensure that you know how to crack an interview that is a completely different skill than actually doing product management or uh, uh, for that matter anything the way i say it is uh, in the interview, just add your sophistication in, in terms of understanding the domain and understanding uh, the problem solving skills that you already have. The way I see it, see it the first shift probably would be slightly uh, difficult, but the rest should be a cakewalk for you. But uh, yeah, like I'm saying, uh, try to build that initial software skills and then uh, know how to crack an interview uh, and take a leap. You mentioned uh, you, you have an understanding of a particular domain of industry as well. If you are aligned to an industry in your consulting domain, or you might be solving a lot of use cases for the customer, which also gives you that ability to solve problems, right? To look at problems that how do you solve it in a structured manner. So that's always helpful. And yeah. the the other, other reason is, as he mentioned that, try to, if you are chasing a particular domain of product management in a particular industry or in a particular uh, you know, area of expertise, then try to see what all products are already available there. Try to go through all those, how uh, uh, the user journey is on those products, etc., which will give you a mindset, okay, there are gaps, right? There are a lot of opportunities here. We can, you know, improve, etc. So build that mindset that how do I solve this problem, uh, even in the existing product. So there are all existing products in that particular domain you can look at and then uh, and then, as he mentioned, you can start building your own app, et cetera, or, or a small product as well, whichever way in you in your domain of expertise you think that you can work on. And, and that you can always showcase in your interviews as well, that, that I worked on this and I, I tried to solve this problem and this was the result, end result. But always measure, as, he, as Ravi mentioned, that it's, it's an important aspect in product management that you measure and, and, and try to improve your scores every time. So if you don't measure, then you can't, be sure where you, where you are moving, right? So important aspect to it. But so, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, Ravi, it was a pleasure to, you know, have you here and have a conversation uh, with you. It's it's great to know uh, from your diverse experience, uh, uh, you know, about the aspects of product management, about consulting, how one can move from consulting to product management and then on the customer experience part as well. Um, thank you so much. Now, uh, so that ends our session here uh, uh, at Sika Mentor podcast series. Uh, I would uh, ask our viewers to subscribe, to share, and and uh, and you know comments on the video. Uh, and please let us know if any other uh, topics you want to cover and any other conversations uh, in a particular area you want us to cover. We'll pick that one up and and do it next time. Uh, Ravi, any last words from your side? Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right.